Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and today we're going to talk about a super function in Power Query called Table Dot Transform Column. It also happens that these days I'm working a lot with Power Query, cleaning up very very messy data sets. So I'm just producing video after video on Power Query. Any which ways, this function is often going to come up in your queries when you're performing a transformation on any particular column. But maybe you don't know how to write this function from scratch. This function has a lot of good superpowers and we're actually going to take a look at if we decide to write this function from scratch what else can we achieve that is missing from the user interface no further ado let's go all right people i'm in excel and that's where power query has been opened and i have a very simple four columnar data uh, we have the name age favorite color and date of joining some random data now let me just go ahead and perform a transformation on one column and you will see that the function that you get in power query is nothing but table dot transform columns please take a look maybe the age is something that i would need it as an integer or a whole number but i don't really want any decimals right here so i would want to round this up to 11 how do i do that right click on the column click on transform i'm going to say round round up and this gets rounded up to the next integer now watch carefully the function that got generated while we were doing the transformation on this column was nothing but table dot transform columns. Now, for a moment, what I'm going to do is explain you the syntax of this function so that when we start writing the function, you understand what part am I writing where and what's the meaning of this particular part. So let's just take a look at the syntax first and then let's just do some fun with this function. Okay. This notepad here contains a pseudo table dot transform um, function. And what I have done is I have written uh, some dummy parts in here to explain you the syntax. Please take a look. So when you write the table dot transform columns, the first input of that particular function is the name of the table on which the transformation is going to be applied. Right? This is typically the previous step or you can write the full table, some other table as well. But here is where you write the name of the table in which you will apply the transformations. Now obviously the transformations are going to be done on columns. The next input is going to be the name of the column that you will apply the transformations on. So you can see that you can write here, write the name of the column and put a comma and after that what transformation would you like to apply now these transformations that you would like to apply should typically be any function that does certain operation in power query right now once you write the function that will change or modify the data in it from its current state to a new state which is nothing but the transformation you can also declare a data type right at the end by putting just a comma now you may have the need to do transformations on multiple columns and what you can do is just by putting a comma right here which I have forgotten and I should do that and just by putting a comma right here you can write another column which is column number two the transformation function on that and the data type on that. Now the transformation for every single column should come in its, its, in its own list. So this is nothing but a list. You can see that the curly brackets are at the start and the curly brackets are at the end. This is nothing but one list. Once I start to do the transformation on another column, this should again be a list. That means all of the work of the column should be in one list. Now, if you're doing the transformation on multiple columns, what you should do is that combine all of the transformations that you're doing in another list. That means this is going to be a list of a list. So we form a list and inside of that list, we give multiple lists in case we have multiple columns. And that's how the syntax is. Nothing too complicated. We just have to remember that the transformations need to come into a list of a list. Rest, everything is going to be simple. Why don't we actually now start beyond the theory and go ahead and start knocking off table.transform columns in unique ways and see what can we achieve in Power Query. All right, let's start with example number one. Consider that in this data, I only want to keep those students which are beyond the age of 10 years. 10 years and plus is something that I would like to keep. Uh, not anybody who is 10 years. So I would like to have a filter on this particular column and I'd like to maybe mark every age with true and false. Are you above 10 years or not? If you're above 10 years, then true. If you're not above 10 years, then false. Now, typically you would do that by ad adding a conditional column. You'll go to the add columns and add a conditional column and that mark it against the age. But in that scenario, what you're going to get is another column, which is going to be, which is going to be the column, which is where you have true and false, and you can then carry out your operations. Maybe I 
would like to do all of that work in a single column itself on the age column itself and just get rid of the age column because I don't need that age anymore. Let's see how can we do table dot transform column. So I'm going to create a new step in the new step. I'm going to start writing my table dot transform column function. So table dot transform columns. Now you can see that as the first part of the function, it's asking you for a table. Like I said, the first part of the table dot transform columns is nothing but the name of the table. And I retained the name of the previous step, which is filtered rows. Now, what is filtered rows? Filtered rows is nothing but the name of the previous step, which contained the entire data, the four columnar table. Now, let's continue. Although the formula is giving you an error because it's not complete, but let's continue. I put a comma right here and then I go ahead and I say, what is the transformation that I have to apply on each uh, column? Not every column, but just one column. So for that, remember that we had to supply a list of a list which starts with two curly brackets. So I'll just start two curly brackets and I will in the internal curly bracket, I will start to write the name of the column on which I would like to apply the transformation. And that name of the column needs to be coming as a text. So I'm just going to write age. That's the name of the column. And what transformation do I want to apply? I want to apply a very simple if condition and check if the value of every single row item, every single value in that particular column is beyond 10 years or not. So I'm going to say equals to if, if the um, value. So I write underscore underscore simply means that the going every single row and check if every value is above 10 or not. Okay. So underscore is greater than 10. Uh, then I'd like to write a uh, true uh, else. I'd like to write a false else false F A L S E. Right. I think this is complete. Uh, the only part that we are missing is that in case we would want this uh, particular function that we have written, which is nothing but the if function, we would want this function to go row by row by row and pick up every single item and compare that with 10. Then I also need to write the each keyword here so that it just goes row by row by row. Now take a look. What has happened is that every single age has got transformed into a Boolean, which is nothing but a true and false. And you can apply filters and keep only the trues and get over the falses. I was suspecting that we don't need the age column and I'm just going to get rid of the age column once I'm done with the transformation. All right, let's move to example number two. All right, in the second example, maybe I'd like to perform a transformation on not just one column, but two columns. So maybe I'd like to do some transformation on the age column and some transformation on the date of joining column. Take a look in this column. Somebody just wrote nine years and I would like to mark this data as incorrect or something. And here somebody just wrote this as 10th of March and maybe I'd like to mark this again as an incorrect value. The way that I'm going to mark these values as correct or incorrect is by applying a Boolean. That means if I'm able to convert this into a number, then it's good. It's fine. But if I'm not able to convert this into a number, then I'd like to mark it as false. Same applies to the date of joining column. But this time I'm going to write table dot transform columns on not just one column, but two columns. Please take a look. So I'm going to write the FX right here and I'm going to write start to write table dot transform columns. Make sure you do take care of the capitalization because Power Query is highly case sensitive. OK, start the bracket and you can see that it asks you for the name of the table. The name of the table is nothing but the source. What is source? Source is nothing but the previous step, which contains the entire four columnar data. All right. Now I put a comma and then I go ahead and start to put two curly brackets because we need to perform a list of a list right in the first list, which is the transformation of the first column. Let's just do it on the age column. So I'm just going to write the age. And after that, I'll just put a comma and move to what transformation would I like to apply? Now think about this. If I just go over and take a look at this particular column, maybe I'd like to take a look at the type of this value. So every in every single row, I would like to take a look at the type that what type is it? Is it a number? Is it a text? Because this is all going to be numbers and this is definitely going to be text. And I can perform that check and see that if you are a number, then you are validated. If you are a text, then you are not validated. OK, so let's just do that. I'm going to come to this column and I'm going to start to write something like value dot type value dot type value dot type simply tells you that a value that you're checking is what data type. Is it a number? Is it a text? And you can use that information to do anything further. So I can just say value dot type. And if I just now close the bracket, uh, and I just write the underscore because I want to take a look at every single value of each of the values of the rows. And I can just also write the each keyword because I need to go row by row by row. 
I think this is just complete for now I can just close the bracket press enter and what you get to see here is that the this is number the the first value I believe whatever number that was 10 12 that was a number a number a number but the last one is actually a text now what I can do is I can do something like if this particular function which is giving me the type is equals to number dot type so number dot type uh, I think that should be good enough I can just press tick mark and now what I have been able to do is write a condition uh, in the table dot transform columns that takes a look at what type are you and if the type is equals to a number or not if you're not equals to a number then I just mark it as false and I can just mark this column and give it out to anybody now let's just start to write the second transformation on this particular date of joining column like I said in the table dot transform columns you can write transformations on many many columns the only thing is that the second column on which you have to write a transformation is going to come up as a separate list so what do I do I am going to copy this down uh, so the first one is the first list this is the first list I put a comma and this is going to be the second list on which the second transformation is going to come what is my second column the second column is date of joining that's the column and I want to check take a look that let's try to convert all of these date of joinings into a date let me just try to convert that into a date that into a date and all of these values are going to be successfully converted into a date but where I'm going to get a trouble is at these two values let's just try to do that so I'm going to say something like this so I'm going to say something like uh, date dot from and from every single row just get the date underscore like I said simply means the value of every single row right so that's what the underscore means and I'm just going to close the curly bracket and I'm going to close the outside curly bracket so you have outside curly brackets and each column then comes in its own curly brackets which is nothing but the list okay let's commit and you can see that it has returned me an error because these two cells were not been able to convert it into a you know a date now what I can do is I can just do use the try and the otherwise keyword uh, I can say something like hey why don't you try to convert these values into a date if they get converted good enough if they don't other other I can write otherwise just give me like a false right I can just say click okay and now I have the the value or the date and the rest are false now these are just dummy examples I'm sure you can make use of these examples and mold them to come up with more practical examples of your own data like I said earlier the table dot transform column function also allows you to declare a data type that means while I'm doing the transformation I can also choose to declare a data type now please take a look what I can do here is I can put a comma I'm gonna write the third part of the function the first part is the name of the column the second part is what's your function that is going to do the transformation on the data and the third part is what data type would you like to apply so I can say hey the data type is going to be date I think we'll have to write something like that date dot type all right now I just say okay and voila what do you see we have applied a, a date data type on that particular column similarly we can also do that right here we can call this as text dot type this should either this should actually be a boolean but uh, I just forgot a comma but I'm just applying a text data type on this particular column text dot type mistake spelling mistake uh, I think this should be good all right now this is a text and this is a date I'm not done yet one of the very interesting features of this particular function table dot transform functions is something like this now what do I do I go back to my source step and I just happen to delete this particular date of joining column now note that on this column I'm actually applying a transformation in the very next step so in this step I'm applying a transformation on the age column and the date of joining column which is now gone right so now let's just take a look at what's going to happen to my transformation obviously like you would expect this is going to give you an error because it did not find that particular column on which it was trying to apply the date of joining like the transformation so I'm gonna call my friend and you've met that friend in case you've taken a look at my past video the name of my friend is uh, missing field dot ignore so what I can say is that in this particular table dot transform functions after I am done with all the transformations like the first column transformation the second column transformations and I have finally closed my curly brackets which is the last curly bracket then I can put a comma and I can say in case any field is missing just give it as a null and write the missing field dot ignore 
input and I can just now commit to this function and the query still works absolutely fine. Isn't that interesting? All right, the third and the final example. I swear this is the last one. Now this technique I use very, very often whilst, while I'm pulling the data from Excel files. And a part of this problem I also discussed it in the last video. We're just going to make it more finer and more sophisticated. Please take a look. What I have been able to do in this query is that I went to a folder on my desktop, which is the test folder, in which there are three Excel files. Data, data, and data. I just made copies of the same Excel file just to make three Excel files. But for every single Excel file, what you get is a binary. And in case you saw my last video, you understand that Excel.workbook is the function of Power Query that is used to pull the data from the Excel, convert it into a table so that you can take a look at what the data is inside of that Excel file. In the Excel file, the data that you're going to get is nothing but the sheets and the data of every single sheet. Now, I can use the table.transform function to convert these binaries into a table. Otherwise, what you would do is you would actually create a new column on the far right and then you know reference that to the binary and then convert every single binary into an Excel table. Please take a look. Now, I'm going to write an FX right here and start to write my function, which is nothing but table dot transform columns. The first part, like I said, is always a table. What table would you like to perform the transformation is? It's the source table and then comes the transformation itself. So I'm just going to start to do two curly brackets. The first curly bracket uh, is where I would like to perform the transformation on the first column, which is nothing but the content column, which contains the three binaries. These binaries are nothing but Excel files. So I'm just going to feed the content column right here. And what is it that I want to do with every single binary in that column? With every single binary, I would like to apply a Excel dot workbook function to every single binary that we have. So I'm going to write the each keyword and I'm going to say Excel dot workbook, sorry, workbook. And I'm going to say that to every single sheet, okay, to every single binary that was in the source step, in the source step, we had three binaries, binary, binary, and binary. Pick up every single binary and convert that into uh, like a table so that I can read the data of it. And the function that I'm using is nothing but Excel.workbook, and this works fine. Now, in case you would like to promote the headers, you can also write something like a true here. So just write a true, and this is going to do absolutely fine. Click on OK, and this now is nothing but a table of the Excel and where you can read the data of that particular table. And you do not have to create an additional column that you would otherwise would have done in case you were using like a new column approach by creating an additional column. All right, that was all about it. All right, that was all about the table dot transform column function. I hope that gave you some experience of understanding how that function works and giving you some ideas as to how do you put that function to practical use in your own data sets. Let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be glad to reply in the comments. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my tax and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out and you'd like to have uh, help right from uh, understanding the basics and then moving to more advanced topics, solving some more advanced problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks for, thanks for sticking around until the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Hey people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a very interesting power query function called Excel, not Excel, table dot, table dot transform columns. That was bad.